On introduction. That's the beginning, yeah. Okay. Just jump into the story and it'll be like that. And I was like, what, well, where's the beginning? I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So tell well, me about your amazing day. That's what that's what we came, that's what you came here for. And, and the boxes and the circles. Okay. Well then do your introduction or whatever then. And I did. that's it. We're recording. Oh, that's it? <laughs> What do you want? You know, like tell people who you are, and you know, and then you should keep this in because it's kind of funny. Just shows you how how uh, computer illiterate I am. But okay, yeah, sure. You're not. You're doing pretty good. I mean, we're working on Zoom, and you know. Yeah. All right. Well. So uh, my my friend my friend Randy and I we decided we're gonna go to a new area. Um, but you know, I, I think that the clans they have they have quite a they have quite an area that they cover, right? So I, I with the greeting that we got, I'm pretty sure that it's the same clan or the same family or whatever, because it was just uh it was it was just amazing. Um so we went out to a place maybe I don't know, thirty or forty miles from, from my place and uh he had told me that some native elders or whatever, some, some, uh, a tribe from a, a local up here, uh, would go there and, uh, go way, way up in the mountains and spend like a week or something up there, um, praying and drumming and, um, doing ceremony and stuff. And they're close to Randy, my friend, he's first nations guy. And, uh, we call him first nations people up in Canada. If you call him that, uh, down down south as well, or if you're polite, yeah, I try to be polite, right? <laughs> well, oh, but that you, you you do use that phrase as well. I, I I just call people Indians or or First Nation or you know whatever. Depends on if you know them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, Randy and I personally, we say all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> we don't. We're not necessarily always polite, but then we're friends, right? But you know, when you're talking to somebody. Or talking about somebody, I try to, you know. Is Randy them... First Nation guy? Yeah, he is. Okay, well then there you go. But you know. But you really you call him Randy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I, you know, I, I uh, personally, that's kind of nonsense. You know, that's another box. That's another box that I was talking. I mean, you know, I'm I'm, I'm First Nation, so it automatically. There's something that excludes everybody who's not, in in a way, right? Yeah. That's what boxes do. We have to deconstruct those boxes. We have to be like the circle, the whole. We have to be one. We can't say, well, you don't fit in our box because you don't believe in in um, my religion or you don't believe in my my politics or you don't believe uh, or whatever, you know. So anyway, so getting back to get into that a little later but um getting back to uh to randy yeah he said let's check out a new area because my my friends keep telling me how how, how amazing it is there so we did drive up there and uh this is probably what's keeping me awake all night i think i'm gonna have to go to decaf but anyway so we we got up there and um <clears throat> as soon as we got out of the car i got that energy like you, you can just tell it's going to be a pretty cool day because you get that greeting energy, like that loving high, you know, kind of energy, right. That you get generally, that means that they're, they're around, they want to interact. They, it's, 
it's a pretty good indicator that uh you know they're receptive sometimes you don't get it at all if they're busy like like other people or whatever well, sasquatch if they want if they want you to know that they're around they will let you know they're around either by giving you a really really good feeling or they'll give you a really scary feeling i've never had that well, that's, because never had. Good, that's because you're a good guy but i mean you know when you hear stories about people feeling scared well that's you know yeah they push away people they don't want and they invite people they do want well yeah because i mean well i mean hey it's just like any other person, right? If I come to your house and act like a complete Yahoo and I just barge in the door, kick your door in, start snapping pictures of you and give you no respect or whatever, you're not going to be that happy to see me, are you? Well, you know, yeah. you're, you're, not, you're not the average uh, Sasquatch researcher or hunter or anything. You are in another level. You're on the level of feeling and connecting. And a lot of people just have no clue what that's about. They that's really sad because yeah, that's really sad because when you when you feel that love and that connection, whatever you want everybody to feel it. And you know, you look at people and they look at you like a deer with the headlights kind of look or whatever, you know, like they just I've had experienced that all my life though, you know, kind of things where I just I just think uh I'm talking like perfect sense and people look at me like, What in the heck are you talking about? They don't understand it like that or something it's just for whatever reason but um but yeah but uh, you know most of those people they don't actually hurt or whatever like that that's an interesting uh, thing because uh you know as far as rock throwing or whatever a lot of people take that as a real aggressive kind of thing or whatever right yeah but they, they always come out of there talking about it so my question to them would be well you know, maybe they didn't like the way you're acting or your energy or the way you're respecting them or whatever. But, uh, you know, I mean, they're pretty, uh, they are extremely accurate with their rocks. I mean, I, they can be right beside you invisible because we've, we've smelt them and we've also felt their energy right beside us and, and had like a rock, like we're, we're both facing the opposite way. And a rock, we'll see a rock like, the, the, the arc of the rock uh, curve right in and right down at our feet or whatever. Now, either they're standing right beside us or they're extremely accurate. In any event, the thing is, if they wanted to hurt you, they would, but they never do, right? Well, I mean, I've had them in my house, you know. Of course, you know, yeah. yeah. And they're invisible, just like it. I don't see anything now, but you can just feel this presence there. And if they really want that one, a couple of times, they like, move some stuff around the house just to make a little no a noise so that was like there was no doubt that they were yeah. in the house but uh yeah that's here again the normal researchers have no clue about this whole invisibility thing. they don't have any clue about the love mm -hmm. that that you know now, now the et people the people who have contact with et they talk about Oh, I met this being, and then I just felt this welcome and this love like I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. See, the ET people talk about that, the people who've had contact with extraterrestrials, and the people who've had contact with heart to heart contact with Sasquatch talk about that. But the hunters yeah. and the researchers, they look at you like, like you're loony, like you're loony bit, you know? Oh, yeah, they think we're like right off the deep deep end of the you know like ready for the straight jacket kind of thing <laughs> yeah, but, but you know I, but people ha people have experienced love from their horse from their dog people have experienced love from lions and you know what i'm saying chickens geese i mean animals can do that they can project an uh, an aura of love you can feel them mm -hmm. and that's what you, it, you know an interesting point was and and this is really revealing actually because um it does kind of speak of that they're right in, well, I know they've been right invisible and right beside me because I felt, I felt their energy and I, I, I could smell them actually too, while they were beside me at times, if they, if they want that. But um, one, in, one uh, thing that occurred with uh, Randy and I a while ago, when they were uh, throwing these big rocks off a tin roof and it was, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I was just, you know, it's just like probably a juvenile or whatever. But uh, the thing was, is uh, my hearing is not the greatest. So I'm not going to say that I heard it or whatever, but 
you know, Randy's above board and whatever, and I know he did, but he could hear breathing. He could hear them breathing like they were right beside us. So, I mean, they definitely can be right beside you. And maybe in, in some ways when, when their accuracy with those rocks or whatever that they're doing, I mean, they could literally be just tossing it right from behind you. I mean, I, we had one time when we were, three of us were gathered around in a tight little circle, right? And, uh, and the reason for that was we saw a little yellow-bellied salamander on the path. So I picked him up in my hand and I'm, I'm looking at him and, and my friend uh, says, oh, let me take a picture of it. So we're all gathered around and in a tight little circle. There's only a small opening between us. And uh, suddenly we seen a, a little rock arch right in. We saw the, the arch and it came right in, right past all of our faces. And, you know, when it landed on the ground, the salamander survived too. It didn't hit that, which was a bonus. But, uh, you know, so they're very accurate. So, you know, to me, when, they, when they're throwing rocks, it, it's a hello, hi, we're here. Get your attention. Sometimes it's a juvenile just wants to have a little bit of fun with you. I mean, I've had a rock throwing fight with one guy that was, that was epic. <laughs> that was epic. But the thing is, is that my point is, is that, you know, these, some people interpret it as aggression. Well, if they wanted to be aggressive, they'd hit you with that rock. And, they, you know, they don't, right? So. I think they kill birds with rocks. I think they kill, like, uh, you know, turkeys and, so and they've been practicing that all their life and they're you know they can they could uh as, as far as we could throw a rock they could probably kill a bird that far away yeah so, i'm just going to so click out of facebook because i heard a little ding and we don't want a lot of dings did you hear that ding i hear no ding yeah no ding oh okay if you didn't hear a ding then i guess we're fine did you hear that one nope okay you're ding free <laughs> i'm dingless you're dingless <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, like, I take it as a greeting or whatever, and, I mean, some people, they'll get real aggressive, and they'll start throwing rocks and swearing at them, and, what the, you know, and, well, of course, they're not going to be friendly with them. Why would you be? I mean, who, who's going to be friendly with that kind of attitude, right? But it's, it's more than that. I mean, they also feel your heart. They can feel, they, they, they can feel your energy. I mean, they know what type of person you are anyway. We talked about that. We talked about that the other day. Is they, if they know you, if you've been in, if you've been into the woods twice, and they're around, they will know you because that's their reality. They want to know who's in their woods, and when they know you, they will be invisible, and they'll get close enough to you to where they can read you, and they'll know. They can know if you have a good heart, or you're, if you're seeking something, if you're hunting, or you're just enjoying the day, or you're just playing, or, or whatever it is. They know. They oh, absolutely. You know, so there's no hiding from them, you know? No. Did I, I'm not sure if uh, last time we talked, did I tell you about the time that one actually entered me and whatever? And scanned? Oh, no, that sounds good. Okay, well, this, this is very much on this, this subject. So um, my friend Randy and I, we went to a, a secluded lake. Uh, we we uh, deal in kilometers up here, but uh, I'd say maybe four or five miles in. You know, this is a place where you can go there and, and all day and you won't see another soul. It's pretty remote. And uh, <clears throat> actually, we took another young fella that's, um, that they, they, they brought to us, you know, because they connect people, right? They brought them to us and whatever. But we thought, well, we're going to respect, you know, we try to show them as, I always try to show them as much respect as I can. I try to treat them like people and I'll even joke around with them like I would with a person with my sense of humor. because. They deserve that. They don't deserve to be like thought of as something different and weird. And, you know, I just talk to them like I talk to you. Sometimes I'll even get cheeky with the young ones or whatever, because they've done some funny stuff and I'll give them heck, but they know it's all with, with a good heart. Right. So anyway, so, um, this is uh, leading up to this. So we asked this fellow to stay back and we went up to this lake. He stayed back a couple hundred yards. And, and I was saying, um, uh, Hi, we want to introduce you to Randy. He's a, this is another Randy. This is a, the younger Randy. We said, uh, he's a good guy and, um, I want to introduce you to him. And 
kind of thing. And so we, we gave him a formal introduction. And while I was doing that, I, I could feel this intense energy all on my arms. It was just like tingling. It was like it really, you know, what, you know, we know that when, when you say a feeling, we know, we know it's not a feeling. It's, it's more, way more concrete than that. But anyway, I could feel the, re the receptiveness to it. Yeah, and and, they, and so they anyway, were, they were they were feeling your respect, and they were letting yeah. you know that that's cool. Yeah, because I, I because I just didn't bring this guy in there. I, I I introduced him. I said, "This is Randy, and he's a good guy, and I'd like to introduce you to him." So anyway, the next time uh, the bigger Randy, <laughs> big Randy and little Randy, uh, went back. So next time, big Randy and I went back. <laughs> Sounds funny, but. Uh, we're standing around this lake and we could, uh, we were hearing them and stuff. We knew they were around, we could sense them too. Like you get that, you just know when they're around, you get that feeling up here or in, it, sometimes your head is just tingling with them or whatever, like it was yesterday. It's just different degrees, but you, you know they're around. So we were standing there and we could, we could, we were getting, we could smell them. They were right beside us. There was a bunch of them right beside us. All of us, all of a sudden, I felt like, one enter me re enter right inside of me yeah. and it felt it felt like a, a light switch went off it was actually like yeah. the feeling of click something clicked or something and i guess he was really checking me out good this is you know like the same clan but a, a different family i mean i'm sure they knew who i was anyway but for whatever reason they wanted to get a real good look and um that was really different or sometimes it's a teaching. The, the elders will say, okay, here's a human and he's good. So you can go and, and feel him. And th that they're training the younger ones how to feel what's really going on with a human. Sometimes it's like I, that too. I, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a really good point. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, that was something, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so obvious, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it was, it was weird when you feel one go inside you and I, that light switch was, I, I asked Randy, do you feel that? And he, he did. Cause we, we always kind of have the same thing going on at the same time. Like when, when we're going in and we feel their greeting or whatever, you know, do you feel that kind of thing? And he does. And it, and it goes away at the same time. It's like, so it's, you know, it, Obviously, it's not our imagination, but it. But it's what we were talking about the other day. Is is they there? They can be in you, and in me now, without us feeling it, and that's a real important point. Like like these people who are walking around in the woods and they're doing all these kind of things. There's a good chance that Sasquatch is not only just invisible, standing next to it, but is actually inside them without them knowing it, and and that's that's like so out there to our way of thinking. But uh, that's actually the the uh, the most common way of relating in the universe. All of us inter connect inter interdimensional beings do that. They'll come in and visit, and then they'll leave, and you won't even mm -hmm. feel it. Well, the First Nations people say that uh, once once you you advance and uh, far enough along, you you don't get as much of the whoops and the physical stuff because they're inside of you at that point. They're, they're, they're actually inside of you. Right. And that's where it's the teaching happens. And the... it, when, when you're here and they're coming in with high energy, you're like, whoa, and you just feel this rush of all kind of energy and stuff because there's a difference between their energy and yours. They'll balance that out so you don't feel them at all. Well, yeah, I usually feel them, but yeah, but yeah, I know, you know, yeah, no, I mean, when they're inside they, of you all the, If they were going to be with you for, let's say, a long period of time, you wouldn't feel it after a while. No, no, I, no, I just, I, that just clicked in when you said that. Yeah, I mean, you, you feel them at times, but yeah, but they can be with you all the time and you don't, it's not super obvious all the time. Like, because, uh, like what happened because to of you, that balance, like you said. What happened to you when you were, you were talking about you felt all this love and it was like went on for a whole day? That, that was like, and then, then you had this urge of you wanted to make this video and talk to me and make this video. That, that kind of continuum is, uh, is, when I, is what I'm saying that they're around. Oh, yeah. You can see this if you, I, I don't know if you watch other researchers, but, uh, but uh, like uh, Sasquatch Utah and you see these other people and uh, 
you can actually see that the whole way that a person is living their life around Sasquatch is being guided by Sasquatch from the inside of them. It's amazing. Step by step, you can see them teaching and guiding. Oh, for sure. From behind. I think they've been doing this with humanity for a long time. I think that's the way they taught the shamans and the gurus. They taught a lot of people all kind of stuff from, from uh, yeah. Well, I made a little. I made a little post the other day, and you know, I mean, because you know, they 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 guide me to to speak on them or whatever. And it's funny because when I talk, when I talk to them about the stuff that they want me to speak about, when I'm talking to them after the fact. Sometimes the loving energy that I get from them is just so amazing. It's just like approving and loving. Like, you know, we, yeah, you did well. We, we approve of what you've done. And, and, you know, it, that happened actually yesterday, but, um, and I'll tell you about that in a second, but I did, I did a little, uh, post. And like I said, they, they, you know, they guide, they guide, uh, our words or whatever. They don't, if, if you're connected to them and they're inside you or whatever, they don't let you go too far off track or screw up too much. You know, they, uh, because that's just the way it is. I mean, they just, it, you just can't really do that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I was, um, I want to figure out what that post was again. Well, I was talking basically about the, the First Nations connection to them. You know, like in the, the old days, hundred years, a couple hundred years ago or whatever, like a lot of the, uh, tribes up here they used to actually trade with them and they interacted with them on a not that infrequent basis you know they they knew all about them they actually like i said they traded with them even there was a relationship between them right and they thought of them as the elder brothers or just another big race of indians is what they call them and the reason that they one of the reasons why they they uh could connect with the uh, First Nations people is because the First Nations people, their beliefs coincide so much with them about, you know, nature, uh, all one, all connected, all the things that they're teaching me and others, the First Nations people, generally, that's what they believe. So being in their heart. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. First Nation people looked at the, uh, the Anglo Europeans and say, you're two faced, you know, you don't have yeah. that. We're not come, we don't come from our hearts. So yeah. We come from this. We talk out of one side of our mouth and talk out of the other side mm -hmm. of our mouth. So anyway, so when the uh, when when the white savages and I call them the white savages because it's funny because they you know we came in here uh, all guns a blazing civilized man. <laughs> I, I don't really agree with that. I think they were the savages, really. But anyway, so when, when they came in there and were running roughshed and trying to destroy the Indian culture and, you know, all the stuff, atrocities that they did, the Sasquatch backed way off. You know, that's why people didn't hear from them so much for 100 or so years. And they became like just a myth. And, you know, in a, in a, a boogeyman story or whatever, or wherever people looked at it. They, they, they backed off. They didn't want to, why would they want to associate with people like that? But now, now that people are being, there's uh people are being, uh, they're reaching out to people or people are waking up, so to speak. And there's so many people who are going back to the native way or a more kind and gentler connected way. They're coming back now. That's why they're reaching out and uh, contacting people now. And and the star people, and the star people too. You gotta you gotta add them in because the star of course, people, star of people course, been been they were leading this charge of nineteen forties and fifties with beginning this. You're not alone. We're here, you know. This UFOs, and then it was contactees, and then it was abductions and contactees, and and now people are now people <coughs> feel like that's their family, their star family. You see, and and. Well, and so yeah. and Sasquatch are coming are rolling in and behind that. So you're going to have people who have star family and people who have Sasquatch family. It's all about consciousness and not being in a box because well, the, the star people, everything, we are all one. Sasquatch people, we are all one. The American Indian people, we are all one. That is their, that's their understanding. No separation. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, they have the same understanding. They're working in conjunction with each other a lot too. So yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's all connected for sure. No, I agree hundred percent with what you said. So the Sasquatch are, are, are actually, if you look at the, if you look at this, the, uh, the star people, right? The, the ETs, they're, they're bringing this awareness onto earth. Mm -hmm. And, and once a certain amount of people kind of woke up, you know, not, it's not just them. It's the whole, the whole world's waking up. Once a certain amount came, then the Sasquatch was safe for the Sasquatch to come and, 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 the, and, the, and become, you know, known and mm -hmm. not only them it's the it's the dog man that they're coming along too mm -hmm. and, and then there's also the little people you know there's a there's a whole bunch of little <laughs> little people the little short people so we're going to be hearing all that kind of stuff i'm glad well i mean i <clears throat> i don't discredit any of that stuff i'm only dealing with the sasquatch but i'm sure that yeah I mean, I'm sure there's all kinds of, well, there is all kinds of other entities, but the Sasquatch got me under their wing and I'm kind of happy with that because then I can just become focused on them. But I'm aware of the star people and whatever as well, of course. As a matter of fact, when I was a, a kid, I had an interesting, uh, this is probably the first, I didn't realize what was going on at the time, but I guess they've been watching me for, well, forever kind of thing. When I was uh a teenager, I came back to on uh, BC from Ontario. I was going to start a rock and roll band with a guy, right? Was singing, writing songs and stuff like that. And so I came back and I'm sleeping in his basement because I didn't have a place to stay at the time. You know, you, you know, 18 years old and what, 1972, you know what that era was like. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I'm just, I just laid out on his mattress in, in his basement or whatever. I was staying there for like a, a matter of weeks or something until I could find a place and get myself established. And uh, I had just laid down, just, just laid down. And I, I saw right before my, I saw right at the foot of my bed, it was like, a, do you know a chalk outline of a, a body? You know, like the police draw? It was like that. It had no, nothing, no substance in between. I mean, no substance at all other than the outline. It was just like a chalk outline of a person standing up, standing there watching me. But it seemed like there were fluorescent lights all around the outline. And I can't remember if they were white or blue or, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna tell you I, I, I can remember the color, but I remember they were like fluorescent lights. And it was, it was completely invisible in the middle. It was just the outline, like I said. And it just stood there looking at me. I looked at it in three or four seconds, and then I looked to my left, and it was on his hands and knees looking at me right beside me. Now, <clears throat> you know, you would think that I would have been, like, freaked right out, right? But for some reason, it didn't even affect me. It was just like, wow, that's kind of neat. And it didn't really startle me at all. And, and I'm thinking probably because I knew them subconsciously or whatever, right? And then some years later, uh, maybe in around 2010, nine period, somewhere around there, 2012 was when it really took off for me. When I got that call to the mountains, I had to go up there and whatever, and it, things really started taking off. But just prior to that, actually my girlfriend, Sue and I, this is interesting, we both experienced the same thing. We, were, we would be in, in bed and wake up the next day. We were both married to other people at the time. And we we're finding these little splotches or little drops of blood in the bed, like quite frequently. Like mine would be a little drop on the, on the sheet or whatever, the, the, the uh, bed cover sheet. And we, we, uh, my wife and I at the time, we could never explain it, never had a nosebleed, never had a cut, didn't come from her. I couldn't explain it from me. We didn't know what was going on, ne could never figure it out. It was like a, a mystery. There was no rational explanation for it, at least rational at that time. I don't believe in rational anymore, so <laughs> but you know what I mean. But, uh, but so when I met Sue some years later and we're, we're you know, we were brought together too, because they connect people. But some years later, she was telling me that the exact same thing happened to her in the same time period. 
she was having that blood showing up in her bed and her and her husband at the time could not account for it. Identical stuff, right? So somebody was tinkering around with something. And then a few years later, you know, I started on this journey I am on now. Well, I wouldn't say started on it, but I became consciously aware of it. You know, consciously where I could consciously know what was going on. Uh, to me, it's all just part of the big picture. Because if you, if you, once you understand that it's about consciousness, it's about heart, then, then, you know, doesn't matter what the creature is. But, you know, that's the other thing is like almost everybody who gets contacted or taken by the ETs, they have some kind of a physical, their, their life improves, they start feeling inspired to go out to the woods and take care of nature. And the same thing can be said with Sasquatch. When you first connect with Sasquatch really strongly, then it's like, well, there's nature and trees and there's a beauty and there's a, you know, there's an upliftment that happens to you. You know, even these hardcore, uh, you know, they're apers, well, they're, they're only an ape. They're, they're still out there stomping in the woods and having a great time, uh, you know. Yeah. Because uh, they, they've been changed. Yeah, I think on some level they're feeling the the energy of the woods and they're, and, and you know, just about anybody who goes out into the woods or whatever feels that to some degree, you know? Yeah, I agree with that. But where was I going now? You continue now because I've kind of lost, I have something to say and it'll come back to me. In a new location, we started off, you, were, you went to a new location and you were, uh, it was recommended by your indigenous friends. Yes, yeah, so we thought we'd check it out. Yeah, so you start. You were checking it out. So as soon as we got there, uh, we got a that that energy greeting, that loving, deep. There's different degrees. Sometimes you know. Sometimes it's like you'll you'll just be, just tears flowing down your. It's so strong. Other times it's just gentle, but but really deep too, and that was kind of like what it was uh, yesterday. So, you know, we got out of the car and we felt that. And uh, of course, the ravens are talking to us and stuff. And usually when the ravens or the birds start coming around and doing stuff, that's another good indicator that that uh, something magical or something special or, or just a, a wonderful connective time with them is going to happen. So we had that too. So, uh, so we, so we uh, got to this lake. It was like four kilometers straight uphill on this road it was like wow <laughs> but for some reason when i'm motivated to go there when they want me to go there whatever i can just seem to do it i seem like i'm better better uh walking up hills and um difficult terrain now than i was like five years ago but uh so then we turned off the road and went on this little forest path or whatever and it was just Ah, just gorgeous. And there was an old uh, logging road made out of wood and whatever, like they had these wood planks. I've got some pictures of it on my page and it was like from the forties and that was awful cool. And we saw a little structure that they had made where, you know, my friend says that they might have a little, little one in there if they're, they're, they're tired or something just to rest or whatever, to keep out of the elements or whatever. They, they put these logs up leaning up and it was against a big rock face and there was a little kind of a cave kind of thing there. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but anyway, it was definitely them. hundred percent them because we recognize that. But so we got to the, uh, the lake and, uh, it was just, the energy was just absolutely so loving. It was just like, wow, do you feel that? It was like, it was the second strongest probably I've ever felt on a consistent basis. It wasn't like I was in tears. But those tears ones or whatever sometimes only last a short time or whatever, or for a, not as long. But this was just a real loving family kind of connection thing or whatever. And uh, so then I, I was talking to uh, Randy about uh, about that post that I just told you about, about the, the First Nations people and how they were more in, in line with the star nations and the Sasquatch beliefs and whatever. And as I'm talking about it, then I really got an intensified energy. Like when you talk about stuff that they want you to talk about, or you talk to people they want you to talk to, sometimes you'll get that. And I really got it strong. 
but uh, it was it was amazing. It was just like uh, I felt, you know, we're, we're all human, and you know, sometimes the people rub us the wrong way or whatever, and you know, like I'm, I'm definitely not I'm far from perfect. So yeah, I, I have, I still have that that stuff sometimes too, where I have a a, a criticize or I'll have a grudge against somebody or else I wonder why they're not like this or whatever. And that's wrong, you know, and, and, and they, they just gave me this beautiful, loving feeling that connected all one feeling. Like I, I could love and forgive anybody and whatever. And it was just like, it was all, all right. Like, I mean, I felt that many a time, don't get me wrong, but you know, you, it's hard to stay in that state all the time too. Right. But does that make sense? Well, these kind of we, we, state, these kind of states, you know, I'm an old meditator from way back, but those kind of states, those kind of experiences, they're gifts. And they're oh almost, yeah, they're, they're almost never repeated identically. There's similarities, but the, but it's it's a gift. And then you have a different kind of flavor gift, a different kind of shape gift. But they're they're gifts, you know. Uh, and so, yeah, because because there's no guarantee that it'll ever happen again in that way. Well, the thing was, it, it, it you know, I've had all that kind of stuff before, but this it, this was just like deeper, and it was just more. It lasted like all night. I was just like, I could feel my head like actually tingling all night. It was just like energy, like it was just like, it was amazing, and I was just so felt so connected and so loving and whatever. Like I, I. I put on Facebook, I said, I feel like the most loving person in the world tonight. And I wish I could share it with, with you all. And I really actually felt like that. Well, that you know? is really, really high stuff. Like, like here, here's like, here again, let me explain this to, to people who are maybe listening. Like I've, I've met four enlightened men in my life. And that, and I mean, it's people who can, people who are so powerful that they can show you God, they can show you this energy inside you that is pure white light. Okay. That's an enlightened man. So, and, and, and that's what they do. They, they, they can, they saturate your body with this life force energy. And then the light bulb goes on inside your head and you go, Oh my God, this light and God is light. God is love. Right. But the Sasquatch can do that too. Mm -hmm. So that thing with the tingle in your head that lasted for hours. If, All day. Or days. Day. Yeah. If you had the presence of mind to breathe into that, to take to, to take your breath and connect into that tingling sensation if it was going to last for like an hour or something or next time that happens just start breathing into that vibration and follow it that's how that's one of the highest forms of meditation that it is that that'll take you directly to god realization and here again the reason why i'm saying this is because people have no clue how high the sasquatch people are oh yeah no clue they're the most magic men on the, on, on the planet. The most compassionate, the most enlightened. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. Now, we're talking about the elders or, or the, or the, or the uh, you know, the alpha males. It's not, not everyone is like that. But the ones who will connect with you and, and they'll be guiding you and teach you, they're usually pretty high, pretty high Sasquatch. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I equate the entire my entire journey with them is a heart lesson and as a teaching, like they started off, like we talked about glyphs and whatever before they, they taught me a lot of stuff with glyphs. Uh, you know, uh, like I'd have a, a thought come in my head and then they would show it to me in the physical with a glyph or whatever, or they, I was led to a conference that I didn't really want to go to, but, but I went anyway. And then Eureka, I knew why I was there. And there was a little pie symbol that this guy was talking about, which, to him meant man, universe, God, all connected kind of thing. He was saying it was, I don't want to misquote him, but basically saying it was uh, in a lot of religious disciplines that that's what it means, man, God, universe, connection, that kind of thing. So when I, when I heard that, I knew exactly why I was at that conference. It was like, oh, wow. And the, the very next day I went out <clears throat> and I, I Barely had stepped out of my car and I saw this amazing glyph, which had a little stick man intertwined with a pie symbol. God, man, universe, all connected, all one. Yes, 
That's right. That's how they teach me, right? That was one of that. That's one of the ways they teach teach. And it's like starts off like kindergarten, and you 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 know you go up from there. Yeah, and that's to me. Uh, like, I, there's no way that I know everything about Sasquatch, but I just I know what the feelings are that I feel. That I. Oh, yeah. I don't, and, and so it's like pro to, to project my limitations on them, I think is a mistake. But, but from what I do know is that the Sasquatch are really passionate about this thing they call the all one. And oh, oh yeah. That. So everything is one. There is, a, there is only one. There's a, collective, there's a collective oneness about all of Earth. There's a collective oneness about the Sasquatch. There's a collective oneness about humanity and animals and plants there's a connect it's, it's like this connected oneness <coughs> that's something they really want to teach so that the tree is not different than the lake oh, oh absolutely that is the main lesson that they're teaching me all one all connected because i mean like you said about the star nations and them they're they're way more evolved than us uh, and you know if, if in theory if we're all one and all connected uh you know it, it's it's to everybody's benefit that, that, you know, some of us come on board, the more people that come on board, the more, the more uh, powerful it is. Right. So that's yeah, absolutely. That's what they're doing. There's no question about that. That's what, that's what their main lesson is about all one, all connected. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And then the other thing that they want to teach is that, that, that showed me a hint about that. We've talked about it already in a roundabout way. And that is the idea of no space. If you really understand all one, that means all one is here now. In other words, the whole of the universe is con I'm connected to the whole of the universe. But they they have this thing called no space, whereas like there's me, right? I'm sitting here talking, and then there's space to my computer screen, and then there's you and the space between the computer screen and you, right? So mm -hmm. that's me, space, you. Yeah. But they don't have that. They don't have that. Like we were already talked about how they can be inside you or they can be standing right next to you or they can be inside a tree mm -hmm. because they're, because they're, they live in, the, in no space. So there's no space between anything. And that's sort of, sort of, sort of like if you can understand all one, but if you live in all one, that means there's no space. There's only one. So there's no space between anything. And this is such a foreign idea to human beings. Even the physicists haven't got that stuff figured out yet. Well, what it is to live in no, in no space. And that's how they can come and visit people. And, and, but, but this is how remote viewing works. People want to find out what's going on on the moon or they want to find out how, what's going on in China. They, they, they do this remote viewing thing and they go and part of them goes to China or goes to the moon and then they draw, make their drawings and work it all out. The only way they can do that is because of no space because they are existing in no space so that there's no space between them and to the moon or them and China. And then they can make their little drawings and, and tell the little stories about what they saw in the remote viewing. So we actually live in no space. We actually can, we're, that's actually the fundamental reality, you know? So then I would imagine that we're actually living all our lives simultaneously. Is that right? In a way, yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, that, that's been coming up a lot with, with what I've been thinking too. I mean, because, you know, like time too, like they've done a lot of things where they've shown me that they can manipulate time or that time does not exist. Uh, I've heard people tell me incredible stuff with that. I've, uh, Randy for one and uh, just other people and myself I've experienced it like some of the stuff that they've done I've wondered if I actually did it but they they kind of manipulated time so that it seemed like you know I didn't realize it like the time that uh, did I tell you the time they took uh, we moved some pictures from Facebook and my camera and and that I think I did didn't I go ahead and tell the story it's a good story well, well I, I'm wondering if you know my Sue came up with the idea and you know I've been pondering it too like maybe maybe they, they got me to do it by manipulating time or whatever kind of thing or, or I'm not sure but anyway so 
I was uh, designing my own glyph, my own signature, my glyph, you know, my own signature glyph, like my, you know, like uh, your name is Mike Carroll or whatever. So you might make an M or something, something, it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't have to be an M or it's just something that they can associate with your name, right? Because it's telepathic too. You know, they'll, they'll, that, that's how they communicate with you through glyphs, through telepathy and whatever. And that's why you have that instant knowing when you see the ones that are for you. But anyway, so <clears throat> this is a lot, quite a few years ago too. So I'm uh, going along the forest path and I see this, this uh, intricately woven glyph with uh, an H and A and a, a four and my B in there. And that's like three clan members signatures and mine all interwoven together and it had an open triangle kind of thing like can't remember it was anyway it had a roof of protection is my understanding of that over top of it and as soon as i saw it i knew we're we're, we're con you're connected to us we're family we're protecting you we love you it was just like oh my god i was overcome with emotion i think that i i think i did break down and was weeping right there and whatever it was just like instant knowing and it was just like oh my god what a what a privilege i mean <laughs> you know, the, the Sasquatch here have, have adopted me into their family. It was just like, how loving and how, how amazing and just how humbling can that be? It was just a beautiful moment, right? And, you know, and I knew it. So anyway, so I'm going along <clears throat> on, my, on my walk. And because I usually go for three or four hours on a hike, sometimes all day. But I check my camera again because, I, you know, I go in and I go out. So I thought. Well, if I don't have that picture, I definitely have to make sure I have it. I, I, I want to share this with everybody. So I, I checked my camera and I took about 160 pictures that day, right? Like I was taking a lot of pictures in those days. They were leaving a lot of glyphs for me in those days. They don't leave quite as many now because you evolve all the time, right? It's a different stage. They, they still do. But anyway, um, just like I said, they don't, they don't uh, do the... Uh, the verbal interaction, some of that stuff as much now, and sometimes they still do, but it's not needed as much. That was kind of like an introduction kind of thing, right? As you advance, as you as you move along. Well, from, so, from what I know, which is very small, from what I know is they would rather teach with feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Than any other thing, they want you to feel so intuitively and consciously, or whatever they want. You, they, if they can teach purely with feeling, that's what they would do. And that's basically more of what they're doing with me now. But anyway, so I saw this, it was just gorgeous. And um, when I got home, I, like I share everything on Facebook because I, I wanna share because I want people, I want people to feel the love. I want people to get a, 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 a light bulb go off and think, hmm, you know, and maybe somebody will benefit from it. That's all I care about. Bring somebody along that understanding or whatever. So I, I, I put it all on Facebook, all 160 of my pictures. And uh, had a fr I had a friend at the time who was, uh, we, we were like looking at the glyphs and whatever. And we, I, I think at that time we thought, I'm not, no, 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 uh, no. At that time I knew it was, wasn't just a straight across the board alphabet because obviously I knew I could connect telepathically, but, but we were, we were, we were still looking at, at them and, 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 uh, saving a lot of them and uh, actually we uh you know did did some talks on them and whatever on the glyphs and about them and so he <clears throat> he saved that particular picture to his hard drive because i was talking to him and sue about uh the message with it and how how amazing it was and how beautiful it was and i was really excited so i i had the 160 pictures on facebook of all my pictures that day and we're talking about this one particular one like i said he saved it to his hard drive and um so as we're talking about five minutes into it i noticed that wait a minute where's that picture there was 159 i'm i'm, I'm you know i don't know if there was 160 i'm, I'm guesstimating but there was one picture gone all the other ones were there this one particular picture was 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 gone off Facebook um, the fellow checked his hard drive it was removed from his hard drive and I checked my actual physical camera every other picture was on there but that one so 
they, they took it away. And they've never, ever done that before. That's the first time they ever did something like that. But, you know, it, it took me a little, a little bit of time, not, not too long, but then I thought, well, wait a minute, this is just for me, and that's why they did that. Plus, probably to show me a lesson, too, of what they can do. And that's where I'm thinking maybe they manipulated time. Maybe, maybe we removed it ourselves. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that worked, but that that was a possibility. That absolutely, that... could be time or just plain magic. Just plain magic. They went in there and erased it, you know, or time or whatever. But there's another angle too. Is uh, you know, everybody knows that Sasquatch doesn't like their picture taken. Mm, I have had pictures of them, but I always ask them if you want to show up in the picture. Sometimes they will, they but yeah, but yeah, generally they don't. They don't random sure. people seeing their picture. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And the reason for that is because of this all one business. That is, if somebody, if you're holding a picture, an actual picture of a Sasquatch, then you can connect to that Sasquatch through that picture, and he will be connected to you through that picture. And this is a bother for them if they don't want that. If they don't know you or whatever. So but anyway, I think that glyph was so personal that their essence was in their signature. Oh, for, for sure. To, to hold a picture of that was the same as holding a picture of the Sasquatch. And I think that's why they deleted it. Is that well, there's energy in the glyphs. That, that's, really how I, that's, how, that, that's how you can read them telepathically. They're, 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 yeah, so it was, it was both. What it was most important, it was just for you. And the other thing is, they didn't want to have everybody out there looking at that, uh, connecting to them through, the, through your glyph. That wasn't what it was about. So anyway, that makes sense. Really that makes a lot of sense. Incredible story that is. It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty, well, yeah. That's one of the ones I will always think about, yeah. It was a great story. But it's all about teaching and lessons for sure, yeah. But um, People are experiencing slipping time. I mean, I've heard that. Uh, when, when did this happen? Was it a few years ago? Or this this year? Oh, no, no. This happened uh, in 2012 or 13. My first year or so in. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people experience that slips, slips in time or they see a little vision of the future or, or they see themselves doing something different. So this whole thing about time, which was how we got started on this. Yeah. It slips, it slips and slides. Cause here again, here again, you know, we're all this infinite immortal energy that has no time and has no space. It's just yeah. oneness. So when you're actually in oneness, then that means if everything's connected, then it's connected beyond time. You know? Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, the, our society right now is completely against it. You know, it's the complete opposite of what we should be. Like, you know, like I said, the boxes and constructing boxes, and keeping people out for, for different reasons, religion, beliefs, uh, politics. I mean, just crazy stuff. The, the, the Sasquatch don't, don't have any of that stuff. And they, and they don't put one, one above the other. They, they will have, you know, they'll, they'll have certain ones that'll be like uh, doing certain things just because they're uh, people like anybody else. But they don't, just because some guy's a clan leader, they don't uh, think of him as any better than anyone else. And that's also American Indians did that too. Yeah. They, they, they had their leaders, they had their chiefs, but that was mostly, it was an honorary kind of a thing. And it was only for like meetings and stuff. And the rest well, of or, or for necessity, because somebody has to, somebody has to make the decision too, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's like this and, and, and they could rotate. A guy could be, it could be a chief for like six weeks Yeah. or for two or three years, and, you know? Yeah. But I mean, the way we are right now, that, that, that it's, it, it's the exact opposite of connection. We're trying to push people out because of our, our, you know, our backward thinking or whatever. That's the exact opposite of what we want to do. We have to have that big circle include everybody as all one, all connected. We're not, we're doing the exact opposite, you know, like. Absolutely. So we're, 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 at, we're at the most disconnected, separated division. You know, every kind of thing, there's monetary divisions, racial divisions, sexual divisions, species divisions, everything's divided. And, and then we wonder why everything's so haywire, you know? What, we wonder why everything's so haywire and going to hell in a handbasket. 
that that's exactly why we're we're going about it all the wrong way. And it's heartless too, because it makes you want to love this and hate that. You know, I love yeah. the poor and I hate the rich. The rich love the rich and they hate the poor. It's just crazy. It is, yeah. Yeah. So we have to we have to learn how to deconstruct all those boxes that are separating us. Because they don't have those. They don't have those boxes that I don't like you because you're like this or, or, you know, an example or whatever. They don't have those. They've got oneness. They've got connection. They've got, you know, all one, all connected. That the way uh, we're running things with our governments, with our religions, with our, with everything is, is the exact polar opposite of that. So that's what has to change. And once that does change, that's when we're going to actually, and, and people are, you know, like coming, awakening or whatever. Once that does change, then we will evolve as a, as a race. We'll be, we'll go on a, a higher spiritual level. We'll be able to actually, things will be so much, it'll be like a garden of Eden almost or whatever kind of thing, right? It'll be beautiful. Well, we can't, well, you have to, we have, that, that has to I change. It'll be natural and it'll be wonderful, but it, it's like, we need to be part of the ecosystem, you know? So you have the trees and the, and the squirrels and the birds and the and the bugs and the, that's all one. It's all one ecosystem, you know. And mm -hmm. you can't say, "Well, I hate the bugs and I love the squirrels," you know what I mean? And, and those mosquitoes, those those horse flies are kind of a pain in the butt, though. Yeah, they're part, <laughs> of, the, they're part of the ecosystem, you know. And that's I know. So we have I to know. have that acceptance for the whole thing. I I'm, I was making a joke. Yeah, I know. I understand, but. But yeah, that's what they're trying to teach us is deconstruct those boxes, become one. And then 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 we're gonna change. I agree. That's what it's all about. That's what their lessons are about with me anyway. I think that's what the lesson is. It's just the it's the all one. And I think that's what the lesson of the star people is. We're all one, you know. I mean, those people can come and take you out of your bedroom, through the ceiling, into a craft give you a little checkup and send you back down. I mean, how's that, that, that means my house doesn't exist. I don't exist. The spaceship doesn't exist. Nothing exists. It's just this one continuous thing. It's mind blowing. Everything, everything we think of in boxes has got, has got, has got, has goes. So that's what I was talking about with boxes and circles. I know you were thinking what I was playing some uh, board game or something. <laughs> I didn't explain it good enough, but, uh, but yeah, they, but yeah, they can walk. I mean, they've shown up in my room or whatever. So obviously they can walk through walls. They've, they've gone into my car and done stuff when it was locked. You know, I mean, that, that is not a barrier for them by any means. That's also how they can also show up from one place to another place, hundreds of miles away or whatever. And just like, like that kind of thing. So, yeah. They don't have those barriers. Yeah, we gotta, you know. The, the other thing is, I heard, I heard the, the Sasquatch have seen us do this. It's not the first rodeo. We've had, we've been technologically advanced. We've had flying saucers. We've had electricity before. We've had all these kind of things in other times. So, you know. Yeah, they're waiting around for us to get it right, you know, and we haven't got it right yet. Maybe this time around we will. Well, that's what I said. It's so obvious. Like, you know, like these days you hear people like, oh, the, the, are waking up. That's a, a really catchphrase or whatever, like for, you know, it's happening, right? People are starting to smarten up or whatever. And that's exactly like I said just a while ago, why the Sasquatch and star nations and other entities are coming back into our lives because they're they want to they want to bring us along obviously so and that's also why they backed off for so many years because because you know how we are right now there's there's it's time for a change and it, uh, things are changing slowly i think yeah yeah they are and, and uh i i'm overall overall i'm optimistic like I'm mm -hmm. ready for the world to blow up and just become crazy and chaos. But overall, I'm optimistic. I'm just saying it it could go either way, you know? Yeah. I remember when I first was talking to Sue, 
she was talking, she had this doom and gloom kind of thing or whatever, which, you know, a lot of people do. And she's a, the most kind hearted, honorable person you could meet. But that was just, you know, she was thinking, ah, that we're going to just blow ourselves up the way we are or whatever. And, 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 you know, uh, the, uh, the saying, uh, um, you know, the end times or whatever kind of thing or whatever. But to me, I, I thought, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to all, all nuke each other or whatever, which, which I, I suppose could happen. It would still happen after that or whatever. But I was thinking it's, it's probably just a conscious shift is, is the thing that was coming into my, my mind. This, this new change or the, this end or whatever, or new beginning is, is, is going to be a conscious shift. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to, you know, blow each other all up. Although that has happened a number of times, I'm sure. But. Well, I, like I said, I've been studying consciousness. I've been a, one of those uh, psychonauts. I've been, you know, meditation, all this stuff for years and years. What my understanding is now is the universe does not use words. The universe is felt. It's sensed. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. Everything in the universe is a feeling, right? And psychic communication is a feeling that a, a psychic imprint is you, you, you get the whole message as a feeling and then you interpret it as words. Mm -hmm. And so our reliance on words, which are divisive, right? Like as soon as you, like you're talking, you were talking about this beautiful experience you had on the lake, right? Yeah. And, and where you were just on the verge of crying and it lasted for a whole day, right? Well, there's the actual feeling of that. But as soon as you put it into words, you destroy that. That whatever that was is destroyed mm -hmm. and it becomes conceptualized into these few words and this impression and these sounds. But that's not what it was at all. What it was was the feeling that you were feeling while you were feeling it. Right? And as soon as you put it into words, it destroys that. So when, the, one of the fundamental shifts that has to happen is people get out of their head of words and into the feeling of our heart, the feeling of our wills, our emotions, and the feeling of sensations in our body. When that becomes more balanced so that words are only a small part instead of the, the whole, I think we think the whole world is an idea, but the world is actually made out of will, which is a feeling the feeling that you get while yeah. you're doing what you're doing. That's what I remember when in 2012 when I had, well, I, I guess I called it an epiphany or whatever. I think that's the right word where they gave me that love zap or whatever. You're absolutely right because it felt like a download of information, but it also, it was a feeling. I could feel the feeling of that we were all one, all connected. I instantly knew like we're, we're all one, we're all connected. Everything is, you know, it's all one big thing. And, and I didn't, it, it wasn't just, uh, I wasn't just thinking that like via a download or information, I was feeling it. I could feel the connection between everything. So that's what you're talking about. And that's exactly what, what happened. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You could write 10 books on that one experience and it wouldn't cover it. You know what I'm saying? You could write t you could write ten books on that one epiphany, that one realization. Yeah, and it wouldn't cover it. You see what I'm saying? Words cannot do it. No, it it it, it was the feeling that was the, the the real lesson. I mean, I felt I felt the connection of everything. I couldn't. <clears throat> and when you feel that, you cannot you cannot have those boxes or whatever. You can't. They, they can't exist when you're in that feeling because. We're all, you know, you, you feel the connectiveness, you feel the love of everything you, 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 you're accepting, you know, you accept people on their journey where they are at it or whatever. You don't judge. It's, uh, yeah, it's very powerful stuff. And I think this is what Sasquatch, that's what Sasquatch has been teaching me. And I think that's what Sasquatch is teaching you. And eventually all those people out there with their guns and their cameras and their <clears throat> plaster casts, they're going to get it too. I think. That's what's coming, you know? I sure hope so. Because it's for, even though it's been like, what is it, 30, 40 years uh, since the what, it was 60s or 70s, it, you know, but 
now this whole wave is the more people are waking up. There's more people who are waking up to, to Sasquatch being a loving, kind, friendly, funny uh, being than there is waking up in, to being a monster. We sell monsters. They sell monsters. Monsters sell. Sex sells. Death sells. Terror sells. War, war and, and, and pain. and what, I mean, look, look at the newscasts. I mean, once in a while, they'll... They'll throw in a little, you know, some of them will put in a little good, good heart feeling story or whatever, like, you know, but basically the news is just all about who killed who and who's fighting with who and why they, you know, and it's, it's just negative, 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 negative. Yeah. Yeah. You never hear a tree wars. Trees <laughs> fight with other trees. No. So anyway, that feeling, yeah, when you're, if, if we can get to that, feeling of knowing we're all connected and all one, then we're not gonna, we, we can't be like we are. You, you, you just can't be like that. It's, it's impossible. That's what, that's what the goal is. That's what they're trying to teach us. That's where they want us, us to, to be. I agree. And, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's huge. It's just, it just it's so, sounds so simple, but if you just shift from thinking to feeling, and what's wonderful about going into the woods or going out is that you just see the, the beauty, you feel the air, you know, and that puts you in the senses, that you're sensing, right? Mm -hmm. And then, from the, then you get your feelings from sensing what's, what's happening to you, you, right? That's how, but when you think, you get your feelings from thoughts, and it is night yeah. and day, Yeah. right? People, yep. and if you have bad thoughts, then you have bad feelings. If you have good thoughts, then you have better feelings. But it's completely different when you sense what's there, right? Yeah, yeah. One, when you have thoughts, they're imaginary, so it's like a not, it's not really real. It's a fantasy. It's a, you know, you're dreaming things up. You're thinking of the past. You're thinking of the future. That's not really real. Mm -hmm. And yet you're worried or you're angry or whatever is going on based on thoughts. Mm -hmm. Animals don't do that. Sasquatch doesn't do that. It is feel. What's, what you're feeling and sensing is what's real. Well, that, I mean, even like a, a, an example that most people will understand is like I ran into a bear on, on the path the other day and like generally they don't want to bother you anyway. But, you know, I, I remembered, uh, you know, and, and in the same line of thought, I, I just, I just, I just stood really, really tall still. And I looked at him and I projected a sense of calm and peace. And if I had a projected like fear and whatever, there could have been a completely different outcome, but I'm, but you know, they can sense that I projected a, a sense of calm and, and, and peace. So, I mean, it, you know, an animal, an animal will generally attack you if they're, if that's what they're going to do is when you run away or when you show fear or whatever. Yeah. You figure out like how do people make friends with lions or make friends with an elephant or make friends with a rhinoceros or make friends with a hippopotamus. You make friends by connecting and being with them and, and not harming. And you know what I mean? It's not, you don't talk to them. <laughs> You know, you don't talk to them and say, well, how was your day? You know what I mean? It is a yeah. feeling that, the, that any, every animal, every being, every creature will respond to the feeling of your presence if you don't, if you, don't, if you are calm and, and mean no harm. Well, here's a, perfect, here's a perfect example. I mean, we've all talked about this all our lives. Like, you know, like a, a dog knows, a, a dog will go to a good person and, and they'll gravitate to them and they, they know good people by their energy or whatever. But, you know, but sometimes a dog, if a guy's got a, his energy isn't as good or whatever, you'll, you know, and they'll, they'll, they, they just don't like them for some reason. And that's, no that's what it's yeah, all about. Dogs don't need any words. And then you know exactly what's going on with your dog. You don't need, dogs don't need any words. They don't need any boxes. They don't need any labels. They don't need anything. They just feel No, it. but, but, but they feel it. And that's, and that's, that's kind of proof of what we're talking about right there. It is proof. Cats yeah. Too. yeah well yeah if, if you're gonna take your cat to the vet good luck the cat knows you're gonna do that he hauls out <laughs> yeah they do 
and try getting them in that little carrier too. They're like, they know exactly the outside, they're like, eh. oh yeah. <clears throat> well, anyway, I think I'm going to go have some lunch. But, but let me just say, uh, quickly, I know I reiterated on this, but like when Randy and I were, and, and they've been doing this with me for a long time, when I, they, they give me that energy when I'm on the right track or I, I, I can ask them a question in my head or I wonder if it's like this, I'll get that energy intensified and that's a yes. That's them saying, yes, it is. Uh, and yesterday when I was talking to Randy about the First Nations thing and how the Sasquatch backed off and how they're coming back now because we're waking up, Boy, that energy was just so loving and so intense. Like, they really were, yeah, they were really in support of that. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, yeah, it's and that's all about love, you know. What it, if it's it was re, the whole thing is about love, you know, which is which in, in, in includes respect, kindness, well, appreciation. All that is about love. Didn't John Lennon say all you need is love? Yeah. I guess he was right. <laughs> let's, let's end it on that. All you need is love from John Lennon. That's a good way to end her.